It's an awesome privilege. My name is Cyril Njiken. And um, okay. You're welcome. Um, I'm from Cameroon, Africa. Beautiful country. Beautiful, beautiful country. Actually, I just came back. I was there for a month and a half. Um, work, family, filming. So um, I'll be facilitating this workshop called Inspire to Lead. And there's a word that will always come back. And it's this word right here. Can we read this together, please? Purpose. Can we do it together, please? Purpose. All right. The workshop is called Inspire to Lead. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Achieve your purpose while? Purpose. Achieve your purpose while? Purpose. Yeah, it, will be an, it will be an interactive process. I don't want to stand here and talk to you guys. I want us to talk to each other, share our story. So um, you notice I played a clip. The purpose of that clip wasn't for you to take selfies with me at the end of the workshop and put it on your Instagram because I'm not famous. <laughs> that was just an opportunity. <laughs> um, the purpose of that workshop was to share the story I'm going to share with you right now. But before I get there, <clears throat> moved from Cameroon 12 years ago, um, sacrificed a lot to come to the United States of America, sacrificed my job, my family, my comfort. You know, because I was, I was very comfortable in Cameroon. You know, I had an awesome job, computer engineering background, um, making some type of money, um, having a beautiful home, having a great car, sacrifice all that to come to America, man. Believing that I will have more opportunities here. You know, that was just 12 years ago. That was June 26, man, 2007. I landed in JFK and uh, everything became bigger. I asked myself a question at JFK, am I smaller or is this country just big? <laughs> because I was coming from Douala, right? Douala, the capital city of, um, economic uh, capital of my country. And it was an awesome privilege just being at JFK, looking around. Right? Sometimes it's good to be stranded. Sometimes it's good to be stranded. Sometimes if that guy, don't, if your friend doesn't come and pick you up from the airport, just relax, just enjoy yourself. Just look around and <laughs> 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 say hi to other people that are stranded like you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them we're in the same boat, you know, and um, <laughs> yeah, it was an awesome privilege. A lot of things happened in my mind at that spot right there, waiting for my ride to come. And I made a conscious decision at the airport not to be the same. I made a conscious decision to be special, to be different, because I felt at that moment that my transition had happened from my comfort zone to a place of no return, where I know nobody, I know nothing, everything has to start from scratch. All right? I said, you know what? I'm not going to go back until I become an American citizen. I'm not going to go back until I, be, I stand out of all the other Cameroonians, immigrants I know in this country and those that I don't know. I have to be different. So, um, Long story short, <clears throat> six years of being undocumented, did all the awesome jobs you could think of out there. Just give me, can someone give me like a job that you think an undocumented person would do? Anyone? Construction, Construction worker, yeah. Dishwasher. dishwasher, awesome, I did dishwasher. No. Anybody knows what they call a bathroom attendant? Yeah. I was a bathroom attendant. Yes, and then it was, you know what was awesome about the job? <laughs> All right, um, I, I, I see a friend who's a, an acquaintance. I don't like to call him friends. An acquaintance who's a security guard in the club. And um, I was telling him, bro, I need a job, man. I need money. Like, I'm broke. I don't have anything. And he said, come, come, come. I'll give you a job. He's like, you can work, right? I'm like, bro, what do you think? I took the plane to come here and look at buildings. I need to work. <laughs> so he took me to the club. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I thought I would be like a server or something. He would close the whole club. We pass everything. Bam, in the bathroom. I'm like, what the hell? This is my office. He's like, yeah, this, this is your office. This is, you have the tissue, you have the, the soap, you have everything. You, 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 I know he used the word, say you'll be a psychologist. When the guy comes in here, the, the P, they want to tell him, tell you your story, just listen and, and smile at them. I was like, psychologist? I was like, man, this is deep, man. I love this deep. <laughs> like, <laughs> I said, can you just give me a, a couch or something so that when they pee and they sit down and they will talk? You know, so... <laughs> so, it was an awesome job. Um, um, I sat there, um, and the first guy came, he peed, he looked at me. Um, 
my tip box was empty. He was like, bro, you didn't make any TV yet? I'm like, no, he was like, oh man, man, that's bad. And he turned around, he left. I was like, what was the question about? <laughs> I knew my night would not be long, you know? And then the other guy came, he peed, he puked on the floor, and then he apologized. And uh, he searched his pocket, he was like, oh man, I left my credit card down there. I'm like, I don't take credit card, I take, I take tips. It was like that all night. But I made $35 that night, and then I quit in the morning. Because, uh, it wasn't making any sense. It was too much stress for nothing. I'm not a psychologist, you know? So, um, I did, so in a nutshell, I was trying to say, I did a lot of jobs. <clears throat> and then while I was a gas station attendant, um, I picked up a, a flyer one day that said, um, go back to school and, and, and educate yourself. Westchester Community College. I was like, oh, all right. Bend the paper, put it in my pocket. That was a very different gas station attendant. Very, very, very different, you know. And um, when I put the stuff in my pocket, one lady came, she picked up gas. She, she bought gas for $30. That was the same day. Listen carefully, this is my story. $30 gas. And uh, when I went to the window to get the money, she said, I gave you the money. I'm like, no, you did not. I'm like, I'm like the only black guy working in this gas station. That guy is Pakistani, the other one is Indian. Like, did you give money to, any, to another black guy? I was like, no, it was you. I'm like, no, it wasn't me. She went off and she didn't give me the money. And she said something that changed my whole life. She said, you Africans come here. You just think you're entitled to everything. Go and get your papers before you come and talk to me. I'm like, holy moly. I was like, okay. That was like a wake up call. Yes, Brian. Why did she assume that you didn't have no papers? Because that's a society we're living in. We live in a society of assumptions. What did I tell you earlier? When somebody look at you, Brian, the first thing they see is a guy with the white glasses and the CCSD hat. You remember the discussion we had with the, with the, with the white guy upstairs last three years ago, yes. two years ago? Yes. What did he do? He come to you, right? He look at you and smile and ask you, oh, you have a bronze hat. Do you know what bronze, you know the history of bronze? He was assuming that you were wearing a bronze hat without knowing the story of bronze. But what did you do? You gave him everything to the statistics and logistics yes. of the bronze. Yes, right. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Assumptions. So, but guess what? She was assuming right, though. And I thank her. Like, I, I, I've been looking for this lady for years to thank her <laughs> and give her a tip for changing my life. You know, because after that, when she left, I was making five dollars fifty. I'd be sixty dollars, six dollars an hour, I think. So they had to re remove the thirty dollars from my paycheck at the end of the week. But when she left, the first reflex I had was to put my hand in my pocket and take out that paper and look at it again and say, "Cyril, you have to do something with your life." You know, and I started searching. I, w I found out the BOSIS program. And I did my G, you know, and then I went to Westchester Community College. Then two years after, I went to Lehman College. Lehman College changed my life. Right? right? right. <laughs> Lehman College changed my life because the CUNY system is designed to build leaders. Right? Remember what you said? Purpose. That's what CUNY does. CUNY gives us a sense of purpose. When I got to Lehman College, I met an awesome lady called Suzette Ramsunda. Yes, and she. Thank you. <laughs> That's Suzette's fan club right there. Yeah. So she told me in the leadership class, Cyril, you have something that other people don't have and use it. She gave me opportunity to speak and now I'm making checks speaking. Oh. All right, this is real. No, not, not yet, yes. <laughs> yes, pro bono, right? We're doing it for the, for the good cause. But I'm getting actual checks speaking, you know? So that was, a, that was a game changer. And when she gave me that opportunity, it never stopped. And then I graduated from Lehman as student government president, went to City College as chairman of Graduate Student Council. Yes. And two years later, this is me, myself, film, traveling the world, doing what I love to do, and trying to achieve my purpose. All right, so we're going to move forward. So Inspire to Lead started at Lehman College. After I took the leadership class, it inspired me to be a leader. And my greatest purpose was to inspire others to believe in themselves as leaders. And that's what we'll be talking about this morning. All right? So achieve your purpose while serving. Coming back to the clip you watched earlier on, how did I get the gig? How do you get a gig? How do you get a filming role? How? Audition. Right? Audition. Thank you. I went to a casting because most people ask me, hey, how did you get it? 
Um, I just woke up in the morning. I was walking on the street, and they were they were filming, and I, I was just part of the film. No, I went to a casting call. You know, but how did I get to the casting call? Listen carefully. Stay with me. Achieve your your purpose while serving. I got a, a letter in the mail <clears throat> that said, "If you don't come to the what, what's that? Did you at the court? If you don't come to the jury duty, we're going to send you to jail, seize your properties, take your children away from you." I'm just kidding. <laughs> But that's what the letter says. Did that, you know, remember the third letter they sent? Yeah. It's yeah. trick. It's not a joke. I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to lose all this just for a jury duty. I pick up my bag and I went to the court at, at 161st. And I sat there on the crowd and the, the guy took the mic. He said, um, welcome to the jury duty. And um, everyone that has something to do today that's very important, come to the front and tell us how we're going to give you a slip to, to, to let you go. And something inside of me saying, you're not going anywhere. I had a class that day at City College. I said, no. Send an email to your professor, stay in this place. You're not going anywhere, you have to serve. That's what you have to do. I didn't go. Chose me for a very, very complicated case, murder and gang related. And I stayed. Bunch of people were in the room and one, and I, I don't believe in coincidence. Fifi was in the room. Does anybody knows Fatu? Yeah. Fifi Jiao was in the room. We served together. And uh, we created a, a family, a bond with the other two, 11 uh, jurors. And among them was one young guy, Sam. He's in Harvard now, doing law school uh, at, at Harvard Law. And we, we I connected with Sam and, and, and told Sam my story. Your story is very important, guys. Do not hold yourself from sharing your story. So I'm telling Sam my story. I'm an actor. I'm a filmmaker. I'm, an, I'm a, doing my master's in the film. I'm just going on a roll. Sam is like, oh, my God, you're just awesome. And then, and then that's it, right? <laughs> Most people say you're awesome, and that's it. What does happen? Mm -hmm. And then we finish the case. I go home. Two weeks later, my phone rings. Hello, Cyril. This is Sam. I'm like, hey, my brother, how you doing? I call him my Jewish brother. How you doing, my Jewish brother? You good, my African brother. And he's like, uh, you told me you act, right? I'm like, yes, I act every day. What do you do? Bro, can you be serious for one minute? I'm like, yeah, I'm an actor. I was like, um, okay, I have a friend who's a casting director, and he's looking for an actor to play an African in a role. Can you do that for me, please? I'm like, can I do that for you? Like, I'm already there. Like, <laughs> like, I I was at the address a long time before we finished this conversation. He was like, bro, can you just be serious? I'm like, I'm serious. Like, I'm there already. He was like, okay, I'm going to give you no your number, your name to Cody, and Cody's secretary is going to call you. Wow. He hung up the phone. Three minutes later, before I even put my phone down, my phone is ringing. Like, are you serious? Yeah. Uh, Sam? I'm like, yes, ma'am. What's the address? I didn't even let her finish. Like, Sam gave us the number. No, ma'am, just give me the address. Okay, I'm going to email your address. Now, what's your email? Serenjiken at gmail.com. Boom, the, the email came in. The audition was the next day. Wow. Guess where I woke up? I woke up at the address, man. I didn't even sleep. <laughs> Trust me. She sent me the, the, the lines. I read them all night. I, in the morning, I was in the four train, Fulton Street. Boom, I was the first person there. I read my lines. Cody loved it. He was like, bro, do you, where? I've never seen you anywhere. I'm like, that, that's life, bro. He was like, bro, you're supposed to be doing something. I don't know. I just need the opportunity. Well, it's okay, good. We're going to call you in two weeks. The next day he called me. That was on a Tuesday. I'll never forget. What are you doing? I'm like, um, I'm getting ready to go to school. Guess what? Alan Yam, the director, love your piece and he wants you back tomorrow. Can you make it? I'm like, oh, gosh. I have a midterm tomorrow. He was like, okay, bro. I don't know the shit that's happening in your life. But when the director wants to see you, he wants to see you. So if I was you, I will clear up everything I have to do and come for the audition tomorrow. So I called, I uh, emailed JT. I'm like, ah, JT, I'm sorry, it's me again. I don't want to be that guy, but it's, I, I'm just that guy. Um, <laughs> tomorrow is midterm. I'm not running away from the midterm. I'm ready, but I have a life-changing experience happening to me tomorrow. I have a casting. Can I go? She read the email. She replied instantly. She's like, um, is it casting? Go, 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 go. Come back directly after the casting and take your midterm. The next day, I'm in the casting hall. Alan Yang comes in. He looks 17 years old, young Asian kid. Goes in the room. They call my name. I walk in. And for some reason, that day I was wearing a t-shirt that says, My Sister Cares Foundation. Some for people that knows me knows what that means for me, right? Right, Lisa? I don't know why. I, don't, I didn't plan that. I was wearing a t-shirt that says, My Sister Cares Foundation. I'm going to tell you guys why later. And uh, I came in, the first thing that Alan asked me, he didn't tell me, read your line. He said, tell me your story. What's about you? Did he ask that question to the wrong person or to the right person? 
I gave him a whole essay of my story. He loved it. And then he caught me in the middle of my story. He said, okay, read your line. And I gave him that line with the same passion. And he caught me. He was like, bro, I love you. Like, you are awesome. I'm going to call you back. That's how this happened. All right? That's how this happened. So what, was, what am I saying? If I did not stay in the jury duty hall, will I be on Netflix today? No. You guys are not, you guys are not talking to me. No. If I did not serve as a juror, will I, will I be at, 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 on Netflix? No. Yeah. This is what leadership is. It's the action of leading a group of people or an, an organization. So when I took the leadership class, something changed in me. Yeah. You know, Suzette and all the staff at the Student Life uh, Office at Lehman, they reminded me that I had something in me, and that was leadership. All right? And they, they reminded me that I had the ability to lead a group of people, or even one person sometimes, or an, an organization. Because leadership is not only about you trying to be the president of uh, Namibia or something. No, you could, in your block, you could change somebody's life. You could inspire someone to, to, to want to lead. All right, that's leadership. So when we talk about Kofi Annan, we talk about um, all these great people, Nelson Mandela and all that. Yeah, that's true, but guess what? The true leader right here is you guys. It's you, it's us. Because we're on the ground doing the work, right? And there's something about leadership that I learned last week uh, from my very good friend, Castel J.R. Barnes. He told me leadership is three things. You lead. Stay with me, guys. You lead. You lead. You make errors. And then you have ships. Relationships. All those ships that comes with, with the ships, you have them, you know? So you, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get into details. But, but the main thing to know about leadership is you lead. You're called to, to, to be a leader. You, you're inspired to lead. You are that person because you have something that other people don't have. And then you mess up. You make errors. But guess what? You don't dwell on your errors. You use your errors as... I call them trampolines. You use them to bounce back and bounce even farther. You fall, you dust yourself, and then you keep moving. And then you discern what are the important ships you need in your life. All right? So that's, that's, that's my, trust me, that is, when he said it last week, I was like, I love it. I'm still in it. <laughs> you know, no way. The calling is what leaders get. Leadership is not a job. It's not a title. It's a calling. That's why I told you in the beginning of this presentation, consider yourself special because you're called. How many, how many students do we have in, in the CUNY system? How many? 500,000, Lisa? All right. How many students are in this room? 36. I would have been clapping already just by getting that that we're just getting right now because that's... You're special, man. Why you? Ask yourself, why me? Why am I here? It's not, it's not because the people are the, the staff at US are your friends. No, it's because you decide. Who, 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 who said that? Yes, speak to me, my sister. What do you say? I said because I'm my people, that's why I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Willingness. You were willing to move out of the city this weekend, sacrifice your jobs, yeah. sacrifice a lot of things to be here. Why? Because you're special. Because you're called. And what does Webster say about calling? Can we read this together? Energy, please. A strong urge towards a particular way of life or career or a vocation. A strong word? what? Is, what who knows what, is, uh, what, what urge is? Rush. A desire. Yes. Strong will. An impulse, yes. Into, it, it, oh, this is right. That gut, I call it your gut feeling. Like, I want to do this. I, I'm, I have to do it. You know, I have to do it. It's a strong urge. A calling is not physical. It's spiritual. Come on. The universe calls you. 
Like way ahead of time, they knew at this time there will be somebody called Harris Khan here at City College doing his thing. A doctor, that's not called, is not going to treat you like a doctor that's called. All right, Caroline? He's going to be caring, compassionate, and everything. That's calling. The one that just come and write the medication and goes, he's not called. He's just doing it for the money. Or because his parents wanted him to be a doctor. Please discern. Discern the difference between calling and not calling. The person that's not called, his motivation will be money, physical things, and everything. The person that, that's called is going to do it for free. That's what the calling is. All right? So you as leaders, you have to know. You have to discern these things. It's a strong urge towards a particular way of life, a career, a vocation. I want to do this. Like, I want to travel the world. I was called to travel, man. I want to film movies about things. I want to do female genital mutilation. I want to do childhood marriage, disability in Africa. That's my calling. I have to be a filmmaker. But guess what? I don't want to be Spike Lee or the Hollywood Million Dollars Mansion. God, guess what? Give me the money. I'll take it. But I'm going to use it for those purposes, right there, which, for which I was called. Are we, are we getting it, guys? Because it doesn't make any sense for you guys to be here throughout the whole weekend and they bombard you with all those great information. Uh, by the way, Jon uh, uh, Donovan did an awesome job last night. And, and, but if you, if you don't discern this, your calling and all these things, those information go here and go here, and then you go back on campus on Monday, the same. Guys, you're not the same, man. The time is the next thing that comes in place in your leadership. The time, the time. Things happen between the time. So when you're called, you're born, right? Cute babies, awesome, looking good and everything. Then time happened, where ups and downs happened. For me, it was growing up without a father, being raised by awesome single mother, you know, my hero. But guess what? A lot of craziness happened in between that time because I was bullied, I was made fun of, I was be beating I was all went all through this negative stuff and I felt like I was I was I wasn't even worthy to be on this earth because everybody else had a father but me and when they would start bullying me they'd be like, oh, get out nobody brings you at school I'm like oh, okay and I'll go home and cry my mom would be like really I want to cry because you don't have a father like go back there and defend yourself man and guess what that right there made me who I am today because now I don't back down against anything you could be a giant, man. I'm going to just look in your eyes and tell you how I feel about you. You know? Yeah, shout out to all single moms. My mom is a hero, man. So the time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future, regarded as a whole. So the time is what's going to be happening. You're going to learn leadership. You're going to meet good people. You're going to meet inspiring people. You're going to... A lot of things is happening. Guess what? To prepare you for what? Calling, you discern that you're called to be a leader. Time is preparation, ups and downs, stress, falling, waking up, dusting yourself and moving forward, learning, traveling to the White House, going to the Pentagon, all those things we did it. Why? Because they wanted us to feel like leaders. Went to the White House and I was looking at the walls and I'm like, man, am I in the White House? Wait, am I small or is this White House just too big? <laughs> yes. All right, so all those things prepare you to be a leader. That's the time that you're passing now. You're at the retreat. Some of us have been here for four or five times. I was here last weekend with City College. I was having a presentation. Awesome, awesome weekend with City College. We've been here many, many, many times. Hunter Mountain, all those places. It's not for your good eyes. It's because we want to prepare you to be leaders. We want to believe in yourself. We want you to create network. Because I have news for you. These people sitting here, that's the people you're going to be meeting when you're out in the real world. Everybody's purpose is different. All right? But you have to be able to discern what your calling is. You have to discern what time you're working in. And you have to discern what your purpose is. All right? Please, for the, for the visual learners, if you can write this down, just hit me up and I'm going to send you a PowerPoint. Please, um, for sake of time. All right? So you have calling, time, and purpose. And you don't just wake up in the morning and say, oh, this is my calling, I'm going to do this. And... Uh, this is the time I'm living in, and it's my purpose. And then that's it. No. 
you have to prepare yourself. Because in the time that we are in, a lot of things happen inside of you. People speak word of bringing you down to you. You know those words? People kill your dreams. I have a lot of dream killers out there. In my family, I had a lot of dream killers. They told me that I would amount to nothing. All right? They told me I would amount to nothing because I was a bad kid growing up. I was doing all the wrong things. So my aunt and uncle told me, you will be not, you will be a thief. You're going to get shot on the street. So during that time, a lot of things was happening in here. And then now, when I, when I finally discern my true purpose, discern my calling, I'm looking at my time, and then now I'm looking at my purpose, what can I do to actually be that great leader that those people say I will not be? I took that leadership class, which she said, and I learned something that changed my whole entire life, and those were the five practices of exemplary leadership. You know? And the first one is what? Who can read that? The first blue sky on there. Mother of the way. Mother of the way. I love mother of the way because he says, what does he say? Clarify your values. Most leaders don't know their values. They don't know their goal. They don't know what. They're just, they're just leaders. They're just doing it like that, winging it. That's not leadership. That's not leadership. Set the example. I was speaking to somebody, was it last night or this morning I spoke to so much people, and we were talking about time. And we were talking about um, being on time. Well, no, it was this morning. It wasn't like, last night we spoke about something else, but this morning I spoke to somebody about time. And I was telling the person, as a leader, you have to be there before every person. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Set the example. If you have to be at 9, and at 8.59, that's when you're going up the stairs sluggishly and going to get your breakfast, something is wrong with that, man. Exactly. Daisy, who speak? That's Lenin speaking right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a leader is the one that set by example. You model the way. Model the way. Set the example. Inspire shared vision. Envision the future. Enlist others. Right? What do we do when we're doing our election? We go on campus, we speak to students, we try to bring them to with us and everything. That's what you do. Sometimes we're even doing this leadership practices without even knowing it. But the, when you know it, it's even better. All right? It's like a visual board. Who has a visual board here? VC Tobo has a visual board. Mr. You will have a visual board. Please, visual board is important. You know why? Because it makes you see what you want to achieve. All right, you cut pictures of your favorite house, your favorite car, all those favorite things you want, and put them somewhere where you're walking in. That's the first thing you see. It reminds you of how great you want to be. You know, enlist others, inspire a shared vision, challenge the process. I always, you guys know, I always challenge the process. Hell yes. I always ask questions. You know, Hell yes. even if I have to be blacklisted after that, I always ask questions. <laughs> okay. So people don't like to be in my presence. Like, you, why do you have to be so technical? I'm like, no, I just want to know. I'm not a yes leader. I want to understand. Yes. Why are you telling me this? Why should we do this? Why can't we do it this way? Experiment and take risks. Remember? Lead, err, ship. Take risks. Errors. Errors is not for losers. The ability to make mistakes and come back from your mistake is the best strength a leader could have. Do not dwell on your, on your flaws. Your flaws is what makes you special. All right, the flaws is what makes you special. In Japan, when it, when the vase broke, you know how they fix it with gold. Thank you, Caroline. We're going to we went to Japan together. <laughs> they fix it with gold. Why? Because when you get in the house and you look at that vase, you're not you're not seeing just the vase. You're seeing the beauty of the brokenness of the vase with gold. It, it stands out. All right. So if you're broken, guess what? I'm not saying you is a is a good place to be, but it's a place of learning. It's a place of experience. It's a place of wow. How can I be better tomorrow? All right, guys, it's important. This is important. Enable order to act. Don't be a dictator, man. Don't be an African president. Like it's me. I'm the king. That's it. What you say doesn't count. No. Listen to others. Take exact. You know, give people the opportunity to lead. The more you give people the opportunity to lead, the better leader you are, because then you're learning while leading. Life is a people. Yes. You want to present with me, Daisy? <laughs> I have a spot for an intern. All right. Strengthen others. 
stretching others. And while we're doing this, I want you to think as I'm moving forward of your three strengths. What are your three strengths as a leader? You write that down and we can talk about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. All right, we have the whole weekend. We have two days for that. I'll give you my three strengths. And when you see my three strengths, that will help you to know your three strengths. All right? <laughs> Strengthen others. Be there for others. Spend one minute of your time to, uh, to empower somebody else. You're not losing, man. You never know. You never know what could happen. Enable others to act. Encourage the heart. Recognize contribution. Don't come and take the mic and say, oh, I'm the almighty Israel and I'm the this, this. You're nothing without a team. Because team is T-E-A-M. Did I spell it right, Professor? I was scared, man. I'm not good at spelling. Is there any I in team? No. Exactly. Team is others. Eventually, you're going to take the credit because if you're the head and the work is well done by the team, who, who is always the one that they clap for? Oh, this is the student government. But he's the, no. I was in S-H-I-T without my team. Fifi was, she would climb on somebody's neck for the team. <laughs> Melissa Carreño, awesome, awesome. Oscar Martinez, I had, I had, I had the A team, man. No, for real. And we keep, up till today, we have a relationship. You know, hmm. that is what leadership is about. Celebrate the values and victories of others. Give compliments. Don't bullshit people. Though. Just give real compliments. <laughs> Because leadership is not about making people feel good. This is not about, this is not about feeling good thing. This is real. Because you can change somebody's life in one second just by what you see as a leader. Alright guys? And your purpose versus your passion. Most people take time to figure out their purpose. Not yet. Because most of you guys know what your purpose is. But if you have difficulties at figuring out your purpose, one thing you want to think about is figuring out your passion. Your passion is that thing that you like to do, you like to do it. It doesn't matter what you want to do it. You know, and sometimes your passion is going to drive you towards your, your purpose. So for your, your passion will lead you to your purpose. I, I know people that told me, oh, man, I don't even know. By coincidence, I was doing this and then this happened. No, it wasn't any coincidence. Preparation plus opportunity lead towards success. There's no luck. You were prepared. And then the right opportunity was there. Guess what? I was at the jury duty, ready with my acting skills. And Sam met me. And then when he gave me the opportunity to meet Cody, I smashed it. It wasn't luck. Do that smash, right? Well, how did that? I'm the man. You know, so preparation plus opportunity gives success. So if you don't know your purpose, find what you're passionate about. What are you passionate about? That passion is going to drive you towards your purpose. But then there, there, there are some values that guide us as leaders, you know. And my values that guide me as a leader are this. I'm going to share them with you right now. Um, leadership is something that I take very, very seriously. And education, um, I don't know if you can see it, but that's my son and I at graduation. Education is, my son is like my first, he's like my guinea pig, man. I, I, I do everything on him. <laughs> You know, things that I cannot do outside, I start on him because I could do it. I want to film, stand here, I'll film you, man. I have to make sure that this slide works good. Run over there, come back. I feed you, right? I give you food. You have a roof over your head, you have no choice. You are my actor. I'm for free. You know? The same thing. I go to school and make sure that he comes to school with me. He comes to my office. Graduation, he was working with me. And uh, he asked me a lot of great questions, like, Daddy, what does this mean for you? I'm like, it means that very soon I'm not going to have financial aid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be broke. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it was at that moment right there um, that my very good friend um, Robert caught. It's like the highlight of my life, man. Like, I look at myself, I look at this picture of my son, and I'm like, this is cool, man. I'm a leader. I have a seven years old looking up to me. Yeah, my daddy have a master's degree. You know how that mean that what that means to him? He doesn't even know what I mean, but it's just awesome for him to say that to his friends. My daddy have a master's degree. Education is the key for me. Family is the key for me. You know, as a leader, because that's where it all starts. Those are my twins and my, my son. I try my best because I grew up without a father, not to give them that experience to make sure that I'm always there for them 
I'm always there to answer those questions. Spend even if it's one or two hours with them before going for my hustle. I'm always there with them. So you have to give yourself those values that will define you as a leader. You know, you may not you may not have four like me. You may have one or two. Is important. Mentorship is big for me as leader because I had mentors. I had mentors, and those mentors changed my life. Robert Cole, my sick counselor at Lehman, changed my life. So paying forward is something I do a lot. I give back. I love to give back. It's important to give back. My Sister Cares Foundation, the t-shirt I was wearing during my casting, is my foundation I created after my sister passed away. So now we're trying our best to build an orphanage in Cameroon that will house 150 children. You know, that's, that's my dream. That's something I want to do for my life. That's my purpose. You know, so these things are important. These things are very, very important. And, 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 and uh, I feel like the moment you get that, the moment you get that, it, it becomes, your purpose becomes clear. All right? I have some food for thought for you. Oh, this is the last slide. Food for thought. One, surround yourself with winners. Your network is your net worth. Bars. With Z. <laughs> your network is your network. The more people you know, the richer you are. Good people, though. Don't, no, no, no craziness. Um, <laughs> constantly seek more knowledge. Read books. Remember I shared the three books with you? Read books, you know, go to seminars, come to retreats and everything. Be present in every moment. If they need a leader, guess who is there? You. Even if nobody is there, you're there. All right? Be present in every moment. That's how you get noticed. That's how you, you empower other people. Clearly articulate your goals. Some leaders don't articulate their goals. They always run away from the... You know what I mean? Definition. Articulate your goals. This is what I need to be done. This is how I want us to do it. Do you guys have any 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 idea how to make it better? Always know your why. Your why is your purpose. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to inspire my children. I want to be the best father ever. That's my why. You want to change stuff in your country. You know, all of us have a why. Please, you have to know your why. You have to know, give praises. We said it earlier on. Sometimes take blame. You're not always the one to be in the front, in the front door. No, you're in the front, the poster. No, be, step back sometimes as a leader and let other people shine. You know, you, you don't know who you're going to change like that. People follow leaders, not others. Bad, right? People follow leaders, not others. So if you want to be a boss, that's wrong. Being bossy doesn't make you a boss. Somebody said that last week. I was like, wow, I never saw it like that. <laughs> you know, so you are a leader. People will follow you. They'll follow your aura, your car, everything around about you. But when you start giving orders, you will shy people away from you. All right? Be first, be the best, or be forgotten. That's like my favorite right there. Be first, be the best, or be forgotten. All right? Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, if you have time for that, I'm done. That was my time. <laughs>